in Secrets of the Bible Code Revealed Part 1, we met three world-renowned scientists, Dr. Eliyahu Rips, Doran Whitsum, and Yoav Rosenberg. These men, working as a team over a period of four years, devised a scientific model for determining whether or not equidistance letter sequence codes were encrypted into the text of the Torah or the Old Testament. The results electrified the religious world and shocked the scientific community. It appeared the codes were real, but could the code researchers defend their findings before their scientific peers? The first experiment was a comprehensive experiment, encompassing a large body of words and expressions that have a connection, like names and nicknames of the great sages and rabbis of Israel, as listed in the encyclopedia along with their dates of birth and dates of death. We measured if indeed there was a tendency for such connections, and the result was that there were connections, and the possibility that this occurred by accident was very minimal. Harold Gans, at the time a senior cryptologist at the National Security Agency in Maryland, heard of the test and the results. I reproduced the experiment, and lo and behold, I got precisely the results that they had reported. I then went ahead and did a new experiment. Instead of pairing each of the rabbis' names and appellations with their dates of birth and death, I paired them with the places of birth and death, cities, towns, villages, wherever it was they died or were born. And the results I got were even more significant than the original experiment done by Whitstam and Rips. At that point, I knew beyond any shadow of a doubt that the code was real. I felt a chill go on my spine. Encouraged by the results, the study was sent to the prestigious American mathematics journal Statistical Science for peer review and possible publication. Indeed, nothing is published in Statistical Science until it's been thoroughly reviewed by at least one independent referee, and on occasion two. In this instance, the documentation was submitted to three separate referees. Following its publication, a statement was issued by five mathematical scholars, two from Harvard University, one from Yale University, and two from Hebrew University, supporting the findings. Robert Koss, the editor of the Statistical Science Journal and a professor at Carnegie Mellon University, is quoted as saying, our referees were baffled. Their prior beliefs made them think that the book of Genesis could not possibly contain meaningful references to modern-day individuals. Yet when the authors carried out additional checks, the effect persisted. The paper is thus offered to statistical science readers as a challenging puzzle. All my instincts as a scientist and also as a Jew spoke against the possibility of such a phenomenon. Yet despite this, the work of Whitsum, Rips, and Rosenberg presents a very strong scientific evidence that under intense scientific experimentation, the phenomenon is shown to exist. I went to meet with mathematicians at Harvard, at Yale, at Hebrew University, and they knew Dr. Rips and they knew about his work, and they all told me the code was real. I asked Dr. Rips to look for things that he didn't know I would ask for until I asked. And then he found them in the Bible code, and he had as a control text the Hebrew translation of war and peace. In the Bible, the information was encoded, and in war and peace it was not, time after time after time. Yet in spite of the overwhelming support for the scientific integrity of the initial code research, there are still those scientists who insist it is all just numerological rubbish. You can compare the reaction of this handful of noisy critics toward Dr. Rips's extraordinary discovery to the reaction of both the church and the scientific community to Galileo. When Galileo said that the earth circled the sun, he was condemned by the scientific establishment and by the religious establishment because what he had discovered changed the way you must see the world forever. The criticisms all have to do with the fact that in science one does not proceed explaining an effect by invoking a miraculous cause. A major premise of the Bible codes is that the text has remained totally unchanged through the centuries all the way back to the time of Moses. But in fact, this simply is not the case. The manuscripts from the earlier periods are not the same as manuscripts from the later periods. This totally invalidates the notion of a Bible code based on counting letters. What manuscript do you use? What variants do you use? It's totally ridiculous. The point is well taken, but once again, the experts disagree. 
Bible scholars have long been aware that over the millennia, the Torah has been preserved with an amazingly small number of letter level variations. Even to this very day, a Torah scroll is copied by hand from its predecessor, written out according to unchanging rules by scribes who undergo an exacting course of training and preparation. To each of them, the following warning has been passed down through the ages. Should you perchance omit or add one single letter from the Torah, you would thereby destroy all the universe. The text of the Torah has been preserved, not only in pages, lines and words, but even in the exact spelling of every word. In the Ashkenazic text, I found nine words, the spelling of which is not exact to my opinion. But in the, the Yemenite text preserved the exact spelling of every word without even one exception. It cannot be said, of course, that the text of the Torah used worldwide today in Jewish practice is the original text. No process carried out by humans can possibly be perfect, but the small number of errors that are known to have crept in over the centuries is striking. The question of the reliability of the text is, however, only one point of contention. In spite of the years of testing and peer review, many prominent mathematicians still believe any words or combinations of words found in the Bible code, no matter how closely aligned, are at best matters of random chance, and at worst, the result of text manipulation. The computer can look in so many different ways at a text that finding hidden messages in it is almost guaranteed. For example, I looked at the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea and I found in there the hidden message, Hear All the Law of the Sea. I looked at the text of Moby Dick and I found the hidden message, Oceans Hold Joy. Both of these are extremely unlikely to occur by chance, yet they did occur. People have claimed that they found similar codes in Moby Dick and War and Peace, that they could find similar codes in any text of one's choice. That is absolute nonsense. They have indeed produced counterfeit codes in War and Peace and in Moby Dick, and they can produce them in virtually any text. They are not the same as the real thing. They are not done a priori. They are done by cheating. Their claim is that since we can cheat on the data and bias the experiment to do whatever we want, therefore, Wisdom and Rips could have done the same, and therefore we shall assume that they have done the same. They do not deal at all with the fact that my city's experiment proves that that is not the case. And by the way, to accept their challenge, I would say I would like to see them try to produce an experiment like my city's experiment to confirm their rabbi's experiment that succeeded so well in war and peace. They haven't done so. They haven't even addressed the city's experiment because it proves that in fact there was no such manipulation. What they have done is very similar to what Wisdom and Rips have done to the layperson, to the expert. They have nothing in common. I studied the work of uh, Dr. Rips and his uh, partners, and the outcomes of his experiment expresses uh, his own wishes and uh, desires rather than any real scientific phenomenon. The quality of a cluster of words you you find is really a sign of the cleverness of the person doing the looking and not of any intrinsic character of the document you're looking at. Behind every picture is a statistical analysis that's performed by the computer program Rips and his colleagues have created. It's not just a picture. It's not words that appear together by chance in the Bible. It is accurate, related details of major world events that appear together way beyond mathematical chance. The fake codes that the critics find in Moby Dick or War and Peace or the Manhattan Telephone Directory have no underlying mathematical basis at all. They are just pictures that to laymen might look similar but are absolutely irrelevant. Amongst the independent experiments that we've done, we match the names of the famous rabbis against the names of the books they wrote. We also did an experiment where we matched their names against the years of their birth and death, remembering that the original experiment only used the day and the month. In both cases, we found absolutely no sign of any phenomenon. There are some cases 
where critics have done experiments that appear to be designed to fail. They use data which is extremely questionable, data that was left out because of the fact that it was questionable, and they've done an experiment using only the questionable data. Perhaps they simply haven't thought it through thoroughly, or perhaps they specifically designed it to fail. But when one does many experiments of that sort, of an inferior quality, and then claims that he hasn't had a success, I say, why should we be surprised? The strength of the famous rabbi's experiment is that it seemed to not require an act of faith on the part of the readers, but rather to be a standard, objective, repeatable scientific experiment. Close examination of this evidence shows it to be completely subjective and arbitrary, completely reliant on faith in the honesty of the people who did it, and that disqualifies it as being scientific evidence. Professor Ripps is an honest man. Everybody who meets him, who has talked with him, spent time with him, comes across as an honest man. It's very hard to conceive that he was part of a process that rigged anything up. And so you have a case where he's being, basically being accused of a fraudulent, consciously fraudulent experiment. And it's a serious charge. It's the kind of thing that can ruin a professor to be involved in something that... I mean, professors have to have a point of view for the truth. So you have an inconsistency. You have an honest man, and you have an experiment, and you have a critic. And there's an inconsistency between the experiment, the honesty of the man, and what the critics say. 45 professional mathematicians with PhDs in universities have signed a petition saying that they don't believe in the codes. There's nothing wrong with that. They can express their opinion. These are mathematicians. These are people with PhDs. These are people who have written many papers that have gone through peer review. Why haven't they submitted their view to peer review? Why is it they're signing a petition? I ask you one question. When was the last time a scientific issue was decided by petition? I also found the data to um, be, have too many degrees of freedom. It was already clear from looking at the clusters which they included that what makes this work is what I like to call wiggle room. It's the fact that one has choices and because of the choices you'll find something. You can keep looking until some choice works. Let me show you one more experiment done by an independent researcher, Dr. Alex Rottenberg. And the beauty of this experiment is that there is absolutely no wiggle room. This code found in the book of Genesis that deals with the story of Esther allows no room for manipulation. We're taking names of people, the ten sons of the arch-villain Haman. They all died on one day, the 13th of Adar. Again, names of people and date of death. Ten people, but the spellings are given to us in the book of Esther. No changes, no manipulation possible. We use the spellings exactly as they occur and check if they're next to the date of death. Yud Gimel Ba'adar. And lo and behold, one of these dates of death, incredibly, continues with the word Purim in code, the name of the holiday that is celebrated with the Book of Esther. Using this particular date, incredibly small probabilities were arrived at in terms of the proximity of the names of those ten sons to this particular date of death. There is no room for manipulation. There's no place where we could have changed it in any way. The names are given to us in a thousand, thousands of year old document. I think that's the most impressive thing that we have. Assuming for the moment the code is real, what is its significance? What does the existence of the code mean to the average Christian or Jew? Couldn't some diligent, hard-working scribes have put the code in place over the centuries? The Torah has been in its present form, according to all authorities, for an absolute minimum of 2,000 years when it was translated into the Greek under the reign of Ptolemy II in Alexandria, the Septuagint. We can demonstrate using the laws of quantum mechanics, specifically the uncertainty principle and chaos theory, that it is absolutely impossible within the laws of physics and mathematics as we know it today to know the future in detail as is demonstrated in these codes. 
Consequently, we come to the scientific conclusion that the author of these codes is not bound by the laws of physics and mathematics as we understand it. It's obviously far beyond the ability of man to do. In fact, man didn't even discover the codes until the advent of the computer, so it was impossible for him to have put them there. The very fact that they're there is the signature of the Creator himself. That is his way of assuring us that he is precisely who he said he is. In that document that is the core of the Judeo-Christian tradition. Many believe that with the discovery of the Bible codes, science has brought us closer to an understanding of the divinity of the origins of the Bible. But what does the Bible itself have to say about hidden messages? Many people are surprised to discover that there are codes in the Bible, and these equidistant letter sequences are but one of them. Some are hidden, some are revealed, some are a key part of the narrative, like the handwriting of the wall in Daniel 5. The Bible points out that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, and the glory of kings to search them out. The computer has simply made it possible for us to discover codes that would be very difficult to find any other way. Originally, it was thought that only the Torah contained Bible codes. We now know that the entire Tanakh, commonly known as the Old Testament, has encoded information within the Hebrew text. Also, software is presently being developed to determine if there is a Bible code present in the Textus Receptus, the Greek New Testament used for the King James Bible translation. Perhaps the age-old enemies, science and religion, can get together after all. But confirming the existence of the code was just the beginning of the adventure. It is the information contained in the code that has ignited the debate and focused the attention of the world on the Bible once again. In 1994, Michael Drosnin, a writer and former journalist with the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post, flew to Israel to meet with a close friend of then Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. He carried with him a letter with frightening implications. Using the Bible code myself, about two years into my investigation, I found encoded the name of the Prime Minister of Israel, Yitzhak Rabin. The only time his name was encoded in the Bible, and crossing his name, as plain as day, were the words, assassin will assassinate. I was shocked. So I flew to Israel. And I met with Yitzhak Rabin's closest friend, a very well-known Israeli writer, Chaim Guri. And I told Rabin in that letter exactly what I've just told you, that the one time his name, Yitzhak Rabin, was encoded in the Bible, the words, assassin will assassinate, ran right across his name. Are you seriously suggesting the Torah actually says that Rabin will be assassinated? All I can tell you is what's in there. Will you give him the letter? In his letter, Michael Drosnin told the Prime Minister, I have uncovered information that suggests your life is in danger. He went on to explain that it was an Israeli mathematician that had discovered a hidden code in the Bible that appears to reveal the details of events that took place thousands of years after the Bible was written. The letter also pointed out that the information had been confirmed by famous mathematicians and the results have been replicated by a senior codebreaker at the Pentagon using his own computer program. This should not be ignored. Guri read the letter, but his response was not very encouraging. All right, I'll take it to him. But I know the Prime Minister, and I don't believe he'll pay any attention to these Bible codes. Guri's assessment proved all too accurate. The Prime Minister made no attempt to contact Drosnin and apparently ignored the warning completely. And of course, a year later, he was killed, exactly as the Bible Code said he would be, indeed in the very year that the Bible Code said he would be killed, all found a year in advance. I failed because I had tried to warn the Prime Minister. I had managed to put the warning in his hands. He'd ignored the warning, and now he was dead. 
I do not control what anyone does, let alone what a prime minister does. I'm used to reporting on events that already have taken place, not telling people what might happen tomorrow. It's a very strange position for me to be in as a reporter, but I cannot ignore this. I'm doing only what I've always done as a reporter. I'm checking out the information, and once I determine it's accurate, I'm sharing it with as many people as possible. But yeah, the responsibility does feel larger. There's no question of it. In his book, The Bible Code, Michael Drosnin explains a series of events in some detail. However, Drosnin's discovery of the Rabin assassination in the Bible Code has triggered controversy on a whole new level. Can the code be used to let us see into the future? If not, what purpose does it serve? The Bible codes are there so when the future happens, it confirms Scripture as the divinely inspired Word of God. The Bible code reveals accurate details about people and events that took place who lived long after the Bible was written. We can go to events as recent as the bombing in Oklahoma where we have the name of the building that was blown up, the Marah building, encoded, Oklahoma encoded, even the name of the man who was arrested and convicted for the crime, Timothy McVeigh, all encoded in a document that's 3,000 years old. Watergate is encoded. The one time that word appears, there's a question. Who is he? President, but he was kicked out. Economic crisis is encoded one time in the Bible, and with it is the year of the great stock market crash, the year the Great Depression began, 1929. The collision of the comet with Jupiter in July 1994, found two months before the collision took place, was encoded twice in the Old Testament. With the exact name of the comet, Shoemaker-Levy, which had only been discovered a year earlier. In both cases, the name of the comet actually crossed the name of the planet, Jupiter, and in one of the encodings, we had the exact day of impact. Of course, World War II and the Holocaust are very clearly encoded in extraordinary detail. We have Hitler encoded with Nazi, an enemy, an evil man, and slaughter. The whole world was saddened and astonished when Lady Di tragically was killed in an accident in Paris, France. Yet when we began to do research with the computer program, we were astonished to discover that even this event had been recorded in ELS codes 3,500 years before it occurred. We found the name Princess and Diana encoded at the same ELS distance. Then beside it, we found the word Spencer, her real name, together with Wales, as she was the Princess of Wales. Then in the surrounding verses, we found encoded France and Paris. Then we looked and discovered tunnel and river. We found the very year, 5757, which is 1997 in our calendar. We found Av, the month of August when she was killed. Most remarkably of all, we found the name Fayed, her companion in that tragic accident. All of this encoded 35 centuries before the event actually occurred. Logic tells me that the Bible was encoded to give us very important information. It was encoded, certainly, by some intelligence that could see ahead across time. It was encoded in such a way that it would be found right now by a technology that would exist for the first time now the computer. When going into the future, we have to guess at the words because the event hasn't happened yet. We don't know what it is. As soon as you start guessing the words, as soon as you start guessing the context and trying to determine what would be the event that would use these words, you're out of the realm of science. You're guessing. It's subjective. It's not scientific anymore. The Bible Code does not give us one predetermined future. It tells us all of our possible futures. And by having this information in advance, we can prevent the worst dangers from ever taking place. The more important question might be, will we, in the final analysis, believe what we learn? News from around the world.
Nations, as well as individuals, seem to have a knack for ignoring important warnings. World War II gives us some excellent examples. Prior to America's entrance into World War II, the Japanese adapted the German Enigma Code into an advanced variation the Allies called Purple. A brilliant cryptographer by the name of William Friedman, head of the fledgling Signal Intelligence Agency, was determined to crack it. With unbelievable dedication, Friedman almost single-handedly cracked the code in just over 20 months. His effort had been so intense that upon completing the task, he suffered a complete mental collapse. But the impossible had been accomplished. The Germans were leaked the information that Purple had been cracked and sent the information on to the Japanese, who simply refused to believe it. Their plan to attack Pearl Harbor went forward, and in fact, naval intelligence intercepted and decoded a transmission from Japanese Admiral Yamamoto to his fleet. The Japanese refused to believe their code could be broken, but now it was America's turn. Naval intelligence had in their hands confirmation that the Japanese fleet was heading toward Pearl Harbor. The monumental effort Friedman had put forth was about to pay off. Or was it? What is this? It just came in, sir. A boy's back at signal of broken purple. Sure they have. Have you told anyone about this? No, sir. Then don't. Those guys over at Signal haven't cracked that code. I think somebody's trying to see if we're awake over here. But, sir... That's all. The Signal Intelligence Service had intercepted and decoded a message from Admiral Yamamoto to his fleet and immediately passed the information on to naval intelligence. But the warning was dismissed. Even the American officers didn't believe that the code had been broken. Yesterday, December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. There seems to be an eerie parallel between the attitude of the admirals then and the eagerness of some scientists and scholars to dismiss the Bible code today. Could ignoring this code also prove disastrous? As far back as records exist, decryptions and hidden meanings seem to have derived from the obsession of the Jewish scribes with the ancient scriptures. And these techniques led to the encryption techniques of the Renaissance, which led to the cipher wheels and the mechanical aids in World War II, superseded, of course, by the modern computer. It's interesting that it's now the computer that allows us to discover these secret codes that apparently were hidden there from the beginning. Was the assassination of Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin predicted a full year before it actually happened? Does the book of Deuteronomy contain a series of encoded words that reveal the names of the major participants in today's Israeli peace process? Could we have known months in advance that the federal building in Oklahoma City would be bombed and the name of the man who would do it? Is there buried within the ancient text of the Torah information about the assassination of Robert Kennedy, predictions of man walking on the moon, and warnings of the sinking of the Titanic? Are we continuing to discover that God actually dictated warnings to Moses nearly 3,500 years ago that appear to be meant for us today? While the critics of the Bible Code continue to attack the original Bible Code discoveries, numerous Bible Code software developers have commercially advanced Bible Code research way beyond the pioneer findings of the late 1980s. New ELS research is moving beyond the nominal word association pattern discoveries of the past to complex matrix discoveries. Here's the full Thomas Edison matrix revealing in an orderly model 55 important historical items about his life. 
In the Bible Code, we've discovered the USA Embassy terrorist bombings in the African nations of Kenya and Tanzania. For example, in the Kenya bombing, there were 19 reference terms with multiple mentions of specific facts that describe the terrorist attack, all located in a compact matrix centered in Haggai 114. Embassy was the central term of the matrix, with USA crossing over embassy three times. We found in the same tight matrix, the location being Nairobi, Kenya, August 7th, 1998, the date of the bombing, in the morning at 1045, that 247 people were killed and murdered by a truck bomb. We also found the names of the three alleged terrorists. The most important warning in the Bible code is that we might face the real Armageddon, a nuclear world war perhaps in the near future. Even as the controversy continues, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that no matter which of the experts we choose to believe, in the final analysis, we must each decide how this new reality will impact our thoughts and actions. Science seems to have proven that the code is beyond the element of chance, and the scope of the encryption would appear to be beyond the scope of human ability, which brings us to the information in the code itself. Could it be divinely ordained, as Rabbi Bakya suggested? The discovery of the Bible codes in our generation provides powerful evidence to skeptics that the Bible truly is the inspired Word of God. They also validate almost a decade of work by my friend, Yaakov Ramsel, a messianic pastor in San Antonio, Texas, who manually has examined the Hebrew scriptures and has found the very same phenomena in the Bible codes. Yaakov Ramsel has unwittingly added a whole new layer of controversy to discussion of the Bible Code. But in all fairness, it must be said he was working on the Code long before the scientists. Over 20 years ago, Ramsel began his search for the name of Yeshua, or Jesus, in the Codes. He used the same skip sequence technique as Weissmandel had done many years earlier. And like Weissmandel, Ramsel didn't have a computer. What he did have was an enormous amount of dedication and a firm belief that the codes hinted at by the Jewish sages were real. In Genesis 1, in the Torah, beginning in the fifth verse, the first word, counting every 172 letters, every 172 letters, spells the name Yeshua in Hebrew, which means Jesus. Then at the end of the Torah in Deuteronomy, starting at the very last portion, counting in reverse every 172 letters, spells Hamashiach, the Messiah. In Genesis 20 and verse 2, counting every five letters in there, Hakarek Oshlav in Hebrew, which means in English, the lattice work of the equidistance letter sequence. The meaning of the insight is the method by which we found it. Now, if this is not scientific, I don't believe there's anything scientific. This is the most remarkable insight proving that the letter sequence is ethical, it's mathematical, it's scientific, and it sets a pattern. And we have the Ten Commandments recorded in Exodus 20th chapter. There are 179 words in that chapter. In every 179th letter, we have a wonderful insight. If you count every 179th letter, it spells Hosea Yeshua Shmi, which means salvation of the Lord Jesus is my name. Some critics, of course, have suggested Ramsell's work is a matter of pure chance, suggesting that even though the name Yeshua does appear, it doesn't necessarily refer to Jesus of Nazareth. The prophet Isaiah wrote a powerful prophecy about the coming Messiah that is recorded in Isaiah chapter 52 and 53. This remarkable prophecy of the future Messiah is often called the suffering servant messianic prophecy. In an exhaustive analysis of this brief but very detailed prophecy, Yaakov Ramsel made several startling discoveries. Not only had God encoded the name of Jesus Christ in these passages, but the names of virtually everyone else involved in the crucifixion and his ministry. 
he found Jesus, the name the Nazarene, Messiah. Three Marys, the two high priests, Ananias and Caiaphas, King Herod, Pilate, and many of the names of Christ's disciples, all of them found in one prophetic passage, 41 names in all encoded in Isaiah's prophecy. One fact about the Bible that is not in dispute, and that is that both the Old Testament and the New are full of numbers. Some of these numbers are simple and straightforward. Others leave the reader completely befuddled. Could the key to the Bible encryptions lie in these enigmatic numbers? It would be difficult to discover the number of times seven appears in some significant way in the Bible. Seven churches, seven lampstands, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven thunders, seven angels, seven miracles, seven beatitudes, and the seven days of Genesis. And this barely begins to scratch the surface. Weissmandel discovered Yahweh at a skip interval of seven, and Torah at a skip interval of 49, or seven times seven. And in one of the Bible's most amazing prophecies, Daniel is told that 77s are determined upon the people and upon the holy city. When Peter asks Christ how many times he should forgive a brother, the Savior answers with that same enigmatic number, 70 times 7. Is it possible that there is a key to the code hidden somewhere in the number or combination of numbers of 7? Or are these simply isolated events, independent of one another? Then again, perhaps the key is not numeric at all. The ELS code is, of course, based on numbers. But is there also evidence of other kinds of codes? The most essential truths in the Bible are, of course, put in a form that anyone can understand. But that doesn't preclude the fact that there are mysteries hidden in the Bible that are there as challenges to us. And there are many examples. One of the classic ones is the life of Matthew Fontaine Maury who as a youngster was fascinated as he read the scriptures that there, are pass there was a passage in the Psalm, Psalm 8 and also in Isaiah that makes reference to pathways in the seas. What a strange idea, he thought. Are there pathways in the sea? In 1825 he became a midshipman, spent the rest of his life gathering data, developing what we now know as the science of oceanography. He was able to get captains to gather data. He ended up developing charts of ocean currents in the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Indian Oceans. And he, as a result, is widely regarded throughout the world as the father of the science of oceanography. All because he was uh, prompted by these hidden little allusions in the Psalms and Isaiah. Two key points regarding the codes. First, we never look to codes or something that esoteric for doctrine or theology that's in any way contradictory to the plain text. The second point is we are expressly prohibited in the Torah from methods of divination. Using the codes to predict the future is divination and is expressly prohibited in the Bible. Predicting the future or not being able to predict the future? Well, that's a controversy for another time after scientists and Bible scholars have had a chance to further study and debate this developing issue. There is a way you can check all this out for yourself. The Bible code is no longer just a name of a scientific research paper. It's also a computer program available on CD-ROM. Bible code software is easy to use, even if the user has no knowledge of Hebrew. The procedure is very simple. First, select the range of text you wish to examine. For example, we will choose from the start of Genesis to the end of Exodus. Now select the range of skips you want the computer to use. We will use for this example a minimum of 10,000 and a maximum of 11,000. Now comes the most important part. Select the word or phrase you want the computer to find in the specified text. For our example, we will use the name Jesus. Click the first name's dictionary and search for the name Jesus. Click on it and the program will automatically insert Yeshua, which is Hebrew for Jesus. Hit the Find Command button and the computer will immediately begin searching the specified text a progress bar tracks the search, and a status box tells you how many times the computer has found the Hebrew name for Jesus. Once the name is found, the program shows it on a matrix. And then it will identify other Hebrew words, such as Nazarene, in the same matrix. Then automatically it will give the English translations. 
Computer Bible Code software research and development is moving at light year speed, yet it will be years before the full extent of what the Bible Code has to tell us is fully known. The new matrix decoding systems combined with translation software, lexicons, and dictionary searches open up the strong possibilities that people may be able to find themselves and or future events in the Bible Code. Certainly it seems harmless enough, but the original code researchers warn that even though the computer makes it easy, the process is complex and the results could easily be misinterpreted. The worst thing that could happen is that some people might interpret what they find in the Bible Code as commandments, telling them what to do. But nothing of that nature can or even should be inferred. But in spite of the inherent complexities of knowing too little about too much and drawing unwarranted conclusions from them, code researchers and critics alike have found a great deal to ponder in the code research. For many, it has meant a re-examination of long-held but forgotten beliefs. For others, a strengthening of their faith. And for still others, it is just another shot fired in the long war between religionists and humanists. But since even much of the plain surface text of the Bible is still being debated, it should not surprise us that opening the time lock that has sealed the ELS codes for so many centuries has raised some controversy. I believe God in his prophetic foreknowledge knew that our generation would be the most skeptical and the most scientific and computer literate generation in history. And therefore I believe, knowing this, he has provided one last measure of evidence to our generation so that our generation would be without excuse. I think if the Bible codes are demonstrated to be real and valid, then in fact both Jews and Christians will have to re-examine their texts and see truly how they impact on their lives. What are the implications to the world if the Bible code is real? It's hard to say. People believe what they want to believe. People do really what they want to do. One would like to believe that if people took the Bible more seriously, there would be less crime, there would be less hurt, there would be less wars, everyone would love each other as a human being. I hope it would make a big difference. I think the fact is the world will ignore much of the information. It's ignored important lessons in the past. However, the message will be examine how you run your life. I think the, the implications for Christianity of the Bible codes to the extent they get increasingly validated and people begin to realize what they are, are staggering because it's, we're long overdue as Christians in taking the Bible seriously. The great tragedy is that most Christians have no comprehension of how reliable and how authoritative our Bible really is. And the Bible codes are exciting if for no other reason. They cause people to realize that we have something in our hands that's more than simply a collection of, of uh, colorful legends and, and moral uh, principles. There's something far more profound in our hands. For both Jews and Christians alike, it gives us solid scientific evidence that the Bible, which is the Bible for both of our religions, is not the product of a human hand. I think that's very important. If the Bible codes are what they appear to be, evidence of authentication that this collection of 66 books, in fact, comes from an ultimate author, that implies that we have a destiny for which we are going to be accountable. And deep down inside, that's discomforting. The Israeli mathematician who discovered the Bible code, Dr. Rips, thinks that we have found only the first and simplest level of a code that is probably far more complex and far beyond our reach as a mathematician, his assumption is that if we find this clear a pattern, there is almost certainly a much larger pattern. But we don't yet have the mathematical tools or perhaps the technology to see it. Ritz has devised a measure which goes into two dimensions, whereas the original Torah truly is only one dimensional. It's a one dimensional text, such as a sequence of letters going from beginning to end. Who knows but that a three-dimensional measure might not work even better, or four or five. Who knows how many dimensions there are to the Torah in terms of this code. The discovery of the Bible codes is one of the most exciting events in history. For the first time, there is actually widely accepted scientific proof that the Bible is truly supernatural.
I knew I was on to something of real importance. It was the happiest time of my life. You can't escape the fact that these things are beyond the realm of just accidental curiosities. They're there by design. What we have exposed is that there is a hidden text in the Torah. And what we see is that in this text, the future, present, and past are all encoded. And thus it encompasses all things. The good news is that some intelligence cared enough about us to leave us these warnings, to give us this information. That's very good news indeed. The question now is what are we going to do with it? That's entirely up to us. In a world that has grown skeptical, even hostile toward the Word of God, the Bible Code has built a bridge between science and religion and forced a re-examination of the ancient truths held sacred by millions of people. The Code also seems to be generating a new awareness of the divinity of the Scriptures among individuals of all faiths. This fact alone could make the Bible Code discovery the most important event of the modern era. Because if we really understand that the Bible is the Word of God, we are in possession of God's own saving truth.